Hey there, everyone. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Welcome, uh, everyone, to a new episode of Found Footage Fool. I, of course, am your host for such things. Uh, my name is Bo. I spend a lot of time watching found footage movies, and I, I come to you in this format to explain myself, to rationalize these uh, often poor decisions. And uh, this time around, though, I make no apologies. This is a movie I unreservedly uh, love. And it is a movie called Capture, Kill, Release. It is uh, a movie from 2016 uh, directed by Nick McNulty and Brian Allen Stewart. uh, Written by Brian... uh, I'm sorry. Written by Nick uh, McNulty. And uh, it stars Jennifer Fraser, uh, John Gates, and Farang Gajar. Uh, Jennifer Fraser uh, as Jennifer and uh, uh, Faryang J- Gajar as Faryang. And it is um, the, the basic premise of this movie is that Jennifer and her husband have been plotting uh, to, to kill uh, someone just a random someone like Jennifer has in her head like she really wants to murder someone and they go to the length of like driving around and talking about who they're going to pick as a victim and and so forth and one of the things that uh, is is alluded to in the movie is that this is uh, sort of a game for Farong and that this is uh, more serious for Jennifer like this is something that she really wants to do and as the movie goes along and she gets you know more into the planning of it and uh ultimately you know kind of abducts a guy in order to kill him the realness of what they're about to do is uh it it, it, like it kind of falls on farang and and he starts to wonder like well is this actually what what I want to do? And um, anyway, so that's the basic premise of it. And it's all, uh, of course, found footage style. Otherwise, it wouldn't be appearing in a discussion on this particular show. But it, uh, I like it a lot. Um, more importantly, um, I think that we ought to apply science and in typical found footage full fashion, I have a list of five criteria that I use to determine the relative success of, uh, of this movie. And uh, let us start with uh, number one, keeping the camera on. And in a really interesting turn for found footage fool and for found footage in general it's not just one camera or it's not just hey here's the closed circuit inside this house or something like that it starts with one camera and by the end of the movie uh there like every not every movie but a lot of these found footage movies have that scene where one of the characters is like just stop filming and you know shoves the camera away and that kind of thing in this movie though it's a real like hey we need to stop this I'm going to take this camera that you bought that you're using to film all of your heinous crimes and I'm going to destroy it and so the back end of the movie is kind of done on this old school camera so the movie yes there is a perfectly logical reason for keeping the camera on the fact that the kind of camera being used shifts and goes from sort of high def to this older, you know, fuzzier looking camera and that kind of thing. It keeps things visually interesting through the course of the movie. And you get some home movies thrown in the mix and and that kind of thing. So, uh, is there a good reason to keep the camera on? Absolutely. The whole point of this is that they're documenting, uh, their, their crimes, you know, so that Jennifer in particular can relive it later. And she describes the whole thing as like, this is the movie I'm making. I don't know what the ending is yet, but I've got a movie that I'm making. Um, And so, yeah, totally successful on that level. Then you come to characters. Are there characters in the movie? 
uh, that you care about, that you enjoy following. And this is another situation where I think absolutely there's... Uh, the, the character of Jennifer is one of my favorite characters in any found footage movie, um, mostly because she is, in fact, a crazy person. Like, she's a, a, a dyed-in-the-wool psychopath. And you sort of, uh, throughout the movie, you get glimpses of that, not just from her performance, but from her mother talking about her um, and and what she did and... and you know, her own actions and behavior as the movie starts to unravel, as well as uh, Farong's reaction to her, you know, because again, for him, this all started as kind of a game, a little, you know, hey, let's just think about how crazy would it be if we killed somebody, and and he's clearly uh, trying to appease her to some degree, um, and uh, Jennifer is just you know full blown i want to murder somebody i want i want to feel that and through you know some of these flashback uh, home videos that you see and her talking to her mother about some stuff in her past you understand like oh she was into hurting animals um in both as a child and in the present and and she just doesn't she's a psychopath she doesn't feel things the way that other people do and She's a fascinating character to follow. She's really dangerous, but she's really charismatic as well. Uh, Farong is kind of the audience sur surrogate where we're like, oh, this is kind of fun until it becomes real and it's not quite so fun anymore. And there's this uh, homeless guy that becomes an early target of Jennifer's. And he's this, I don't think the acting is necessarily great. Uh, for, from this guy, uh, Gary is his name, uh, as played by John Gates. Um, and, but he's this very amiable, friendly Canadian dude. And that's also kind of fun. And it's, you know, all of this stuff, I think sort of works together to make this movie really interesting. Uh, the, the characters I think are, are, are fun to follow, you're engaged in what they're doing. Um, and and I think that's... Like, it's it, it very successful in that way. Um, then we come to authenticity. And this is another area where I think... Uh, Capture, Kill, Release really shines. Is in the, the presentation of a psychopath. Like, it's not the mask killer of a Friday the 13th or... Uh, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which are these, you know, bigger than life, um, kinds of iconic horror figures. But Jennifer is more mundane. And that's, I think what makes it more terrifying in a lot of ways that Jennifer is a character who is most frightening because she presents as so normal. And then the more you know about her, the more you realize, like, oh, she is entirely capable of killing many, many people, not just one or two. Like, this movie, you know, if, if left unchecked, Jennifer would be a serial killer that murdered dozens. And, but it, but, but none of that is ever presented in a, uh, like, a hyperbolic way. It's all very real. And you know, Farong's reaction to it. Like after they kill somebody, he j he's like, okay, we did it. We're done. You can see the guilt weighing on him and, and he becomes really withdrawn and he's just tired all the time. And, um, I think it gets that part of it right as well. But Jennifer's amped up like, oh, we did it. Now let's, you know, let's do more. So, uh, all of that stuff I think works great. Um, and so I think, you know, our first three categories, fantastic. Then you get to watchability. Is the movie not just authentic and the characters are good? Uh, there's a good reason to keep all the camera on. So you're not constantly thinking like, well, this is stupid. Why don't you just put down the camera and run? All of that stuff is fine. The movie as a whole is, I, I, my biggest complaint is I think it drags ever so slightly in the middle of the movie, even though it's not terribly long. But after the first time she kills someone, um, you're kind of dealing with the aftermath of that. And I wish that were a little shorter, 
before you got to the final act of the movie. But that's a kind of a minor complaint because on on the grand scheme of things, this is one of the most entertaining found footage movies I think I've ever seen. And not only do I find it incredibly watchable, I've seen it multiple times. And every time I watch it, I come away from it thinking that it's still one of the best found footage movies I've ever seen. And uh, so the watchability is kind of off the charts as far as I'm concerned. And then we come to scares. Is the movie scary? Now, this is not, it's not a supernatural horror. It is not alien abduction found footage like we see a bunch of times. Um, there's no Ouija boards or devil possession or any of that stuff. This is, like, the thing that I find frightening about it is the, the mundanity of it. The fact that this is just your next door neighbor who you think is a totally fine person. Like, there's, there's a scene after she kills a cat just to do it. You know, just to murder a cat because she's kind of taking Ferengs' temperature to some degree. But also just satisfying these urges that she has. And so, as she's uh, going through th this process of, like, ramping herself up to kill an actual human being and murders this cat, you see someone come around at one point looking for that cat. And... The face that she puts on, you know, as T.S. Eliot put it, it's the, the face to meet the faces we meet. Um, th that she is incredibly, you know, like sympathetic to this person. And you know it's all bullshit. And that's one of the things that I think is really uh, frightening about this character. Is that she is a great presentation of a psychopath. She, she believes... In what she is saying in the moment, she is she uh, wears this mask for everyone else, and and uh, you know the question becomes how much of how much of her is the mask, and I think that's the question that Ferrang is asking himself as well: is this woman that I am married to that I love, like how much of her is the actual person that I love, and how much of it is? The, the mask that she wears so that her true self, which is this murderer, how much of that is the real Jennifer? And, you know, I think the answer to that question really is that she is she is just more the murderer that, you know, that power and control and all that stuff that, you know, psychopaths get off on. Um, that's really the thing that is, is motivating her. And I think that's what makes it scary. It's not jump scare scary but it's a movie that when i think of a good representation of a serial killer you know it's this and henry portrait of a serial killer and you know yeah a little bit silence of the lamps but that's real hollywooded up i mean there's some uh good stuff in there but it's you know a little bit uh pristine it it, it has that soft filter of hollywood on it unlike henry and capture kill release and, you know, that's high praise to put it up there with uh, a movie like Henry, but that's, it, it, it falls into that category for me. Um, I don't know that it's quite as successful as a film as something like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, but I really love it. And as far as found footage movies go, it is wildly successful, I think. It's one of those movies, if you haven't seen it, um, you really ought to. Uh, it's a great, great um, uh, depiction of a killer in the early days of becoming a murderer. And it, it's really, really something. So, um, you know, I, was, I know I wasn't scoring these categories individually. Uh, I want to save this uh, for the end and say, you know, how do I land ultimately on capture, kill, release? It's, uh, you know, uh, it's a five out of five for me. I think it, despite some minor flaws with pacing in the middle of this movie and some of the performances not being as good as some of the others, it's an incredibly effective found footage horror film. And I, I think it's uh, amazing. I, I, I love this movie. I've seen it a number of times. I will see it again. There, there are people that don't like it and I don't quite get it because I think it's everything I want out of a killer movie. Um, Jennifer Frazier in particular, I think she's fantastic in this movie. 
Uh, as far as I know, this is the only thing she ever did. And I don't know where she came from. I don't know why this is the only movie uh, that uh, she, you know, starred in. Because I think she's actually very, very good in this movie. It, it's really something. Uh, I, I hope that you guys will give this movie a chance and let me know. Uh, feel free to disagree with me. Um, and and let me know what it is that I I am not seeing in terms of the, the flaws in this movie. But it totally works for me. I think it's incredibly successful. Uh, so, that is going to do it uh, for this time here on uh, the the found footage fool on the dark parade. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I, again, I can't recommend enough that you go out and, and find yourself a copy of capture kill release and, and enjoy, uh, just some of the worst behavior you're going to see a human being engage in. Um, it's, and she's strangely sexy in the movie. And that's the other thing that is really dark and conflicting about it. But you also understand like for ring is it like, he's in love with her. He's seduced by her. Um, Anyway, uh, terrific movie, terrific movie, uh, and and let me know if you don't care for it. Let me know why. I'm I'm curious to hear other thoughts on it because I've always adored this movie. Um, so uh, to that end, if you want to drop me a line, you can do so. Uh, at the, we have a Facebook group, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash uh, dark parade. Um, you can also uh, find me on Twitter at uh, Dark Parade Pod. And uh, you can also go to uh, legionpodcasts.com uh, forward slash the dash dark dash parade and find all of the old shows there as well as a link to the Discord server, uh, which I would uh, recommend you join because I see the Discord stuff all the, the, the damn time and, uh, and tend to respond there pretty quickly as well. So, uh, if you want to drop me a line in any of those places, uh, please feel free to. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this movie and others. And uh, most importantly, uh, thank you, as always, for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you soon. <laughs>